Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY24 earnings conference call of Repco Home Finance hosted by Yes Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your just on phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rajiv Mehta from Yes Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Jacob. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, welcome to Q1 FI24 earnings call of Repco Home Finance. Firstly, we thank the management for giving us this opportunity. We have the top management team along with us, uh, Mr. K. Swaminathan, Managing Director and CEO. Mr. T. Karunakaran, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. N. Balasubramaniam, Chief, Chief Development Officer, and Ms. K. Lakshmi, Chief Financial Officer. Now, I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Swaminathan for his opening remarks on company's performance and the outlook. Post this, we'll open the floor for questions. Over to you, Mr. Swaminathan. Thanks, thanks Mr. Rajiv Mehta. Thanks, Mr. Jacob. We would like to welcome all to the earnings call of uh, RHFL for the quarter ended June 30, 2023. Thank you all for joining us in this call today. As an introduction, we are happy to announce that we are on the right track to continue the momentum of the previous quarters. The company is steadily progressing on its business path. Thanks, Mr. Sorry. sorry for the interruption. Once again, I'll start. We welcome all of you to this earnings call for the first quarter of 2023-24. We are happy to announce that we are on the right track to continue the momentum of the previous quarters. The company is steadily progressing on its business parameters and is confident of meeting its daily numbers. The company is in the process of making structural changes in the organization, the results of which would become visible in the coming quarters. As far as business updates, we were able to achieve a disbursement of 684 crores against 642 crores of Q1 FI23, registering a growth of 7%. Our sanctions stood at 726 crores as compared to 691 crores of Q1 FI23, recording a OIOI growth of 5%. It is worthwhile to note that the sanction and disbursements in Q1 of last year included a DA pool purchase of 70 crores, while there was no such pool purchase in the quarter Q1 of 2024. Our AEM stands at 12,655 crores, increased by around 2% QOQ and from the previous quarter of 12,449 crores. The ratio of exposure between non-salaried and salaried segment stood at 51.8% and 48.2% respectively. The share to non-housing loan, that is home equity, stood about 23.1% of loan book and housing loans contributed about 76.9% of the book. We were able to reduce the GNPA from 719 crores to 695 crores which is 5.5% of the AEM, and the NPA stood at 338 crores at 2.8%. We have a total provision of 524 crores with a provision coverage ratio of 51.4% for the stage 3 assets. As of June 30, 2023, we hold 600 crores of restructured portfolio, of which approximately 200 crores is in stage 3. Our NIM for Q1 FI24 was at 5.1% as again 4.6% in Q1 FI23. We have been able to successfully transfer the increase in our borrowing costs and also improve our margins. We continue to operate at a spread of 3.3%. Our average yield on the incremental loan sanctioned rose to 11.56% in Q1 as compared to 11.08% previous quarter. The profits grew 8.5% QOQ and 43.5% YOY, amounting to 89 crores as against 82 crores in Q4 FI23 and 62 crores in Q1 FI23. Our ROA and ROE improved to 2.8% and 15.8% respectively in Q1 FI24 as against respective figures for Q4 at 2.7% and 14.4%. During Q1 FI23, we were a little aggressive in recovery actions and more than 1,340 surface notices have been issued during the last quarter. Similarly, we are also happy to announce that the company has implemented a salary revision of all the staff members with effect from January 2023. These 
two measures might have contributed a little increase in our total cost, but we are confident that the pay package as well as the recovery efforts will give a good result for the company in the coming quarters. We also expect a drop in our attrition ratios. The new software, as indicated in our previous meet, the new software package is already in place in all the outlets. Besides, mobile applications under phase one of the project is on the verge of completion and shall be rolled out immediately post performing a security check. Such an add-on functions to this particular rollout, mainly to facilitate decision making in head office would be implemented in the coming months. Branch network. As of June 30, 2023, we have 193 touch points across 12 states and one beauty, comprising of 159 branches and 34 satellite centers with additional two asset recovery branches. In the month of July 23, that is in the current quarter, we have already upgraded seven of our SAT centers. We will also be opening three more SAT centers this, year, this quarter. By year end, we will be having more than 200 outlets. To summarize, the key financial highlights for the quarter are the loan book standing at 12,655 crores, registering 7% year-on-year growth, PAT at 89 crores, ROA and ROE at 2.8 and 15.8% respectively. The core profitability has remained strong with a solid spread and margin of 3.3 and 5.1% respectively. The gross NPA stood at 5.5% with a coverage of 51.4% and net NPA is at 2.8%. For base forward, for FI23, we plan to stick to our guidance numbers of 20% growth in sanctions and disbursements and 12% AEM growth for, uh, from FI23. The GNPA numbers are planned to be brought down by at least 100 crores, out of which we have already reduced 24 crores. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and we are open to questions by uh, all the people in there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rajiv, once again. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Amish Thakkar from Singular Gulf India Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Congratulations on uh, any kind of number. Um, just want to get some clarity on your uh, disbursement growth. You know, so any guidance on uh, full year and by when do you expect to get to about 1,000 crores per quarter? And if you can just break it down by any addition of new branches that you're planning going on. And break it down by state also because the AUM period in your home market is uh, in single digits while a couple of other markets are growing at double digits. At the same time, Gujarat has been negative, you know. So what's the issue in Gujarat and like scaling down the portfolio if you can just give us a broad perspective uh, high level on each market this Okay. Uh, thanks, Mr. Anish. I think uh, see, if you see if you exclude the 70 crores of DEA book which we did last quarter, that is uh, year on year, I think we have grown by around 20% as far as disbursements are concerned. That's why we plan to maintain the same as far as disbursement numbers are concerned. Going forward, especially the first quarter is normally a lean quarter, despite that we have grown 20% year on year. So in the current year also, <coughs> we are planning to increase the total disbursement number from around 3,000 crores last year to around 3,600 this current year. So we are on track. We will be, we are confident that we will be able to achieve the numbers as far as disbursement numbers are concerned. As regards AEM, I think we were around 12,400 uh, 12, in the beginning of the year. We plan to reach somewhere around 14,000 crores by the current year end. That is our plan of action. Hopefully when the uh, increase happens, uh, when the um, momentum happens, especially the second and third quarter or normally the peak quarters for the company, so during the second and third quarter when the increase of the momentum picks up, I think definitely the book growth also will be more than uh, the 9% growth that we did last uh, first quarter May. So definitely I think we will be able to reach the number of around 14,000 crores. That is our plan of action for the year end. 
So, so anything on branch expansion strategy going forward and what's happening in Tamil Nadu, why the even growth there is 7-8% versus uh, double-digit growth in some other markets? How do you see the market in Tamil Nadu playing out there? 56% of AUM is sitting there. So. <coughs> Frankly, Tamil Nadu is doing well. That is, uh, see, even despite the repayments, we are able to maintain the share of Tamil Nadu book, which implies that it is also giving us new businesses. And we are opening, uh, I think I told in the previous call also, we are opening uh, satellite centers in Tamil Nadu because these uh, centers that we are, we are opening, uh, these centers are mostly in Tier 2 or Tier 3 centers. So we are opening in the form of a, a SAT centers in Tamil Nadu, whereas in other places we directly go for branch opening. And Tamil Nadu is contributing a bulk of our business, more than 50% is being given by Tamil Nadu, and we plan to maintain the same ratio. As far as numbers are concerned, I told in the initial thing itself, we will be somewhere around 200 plus by the year end. Tamil Nadu itself, we will be opening another 6 or 7 uh, SAT offices before the year end, and other places, at least some 10 branches will be opening other than Tamil Nadu. So, by year end, I think we should be somewhere around 200 plus of this. And you seem to be actively running down your portfolio in Gujarat. It stands at only 3% of your book, but have you stopped new disbursements completely there? And is it like the same issue that industry faced in the Sura region, or is it something else here? Uh, nothing on that, sir. You see, comparatively, we are not all that popular in uh, markets in West compared to South. So that is why there is a slow pickup as far as uh, markets like Gujarat, as you are saying. And we are not, we are positive. In fact, we will be opening some of the branches in Gujarat. Some of our branch expansions are in Gujarat only. Once the infrastructure, including the human capital, is in place, we will be opening branches in Gujarat. And we want more growth in Gujarat because that is a improved growth market for us. Okay. And this uh, 14,000 crore target, you're factoring in any BT outs, you know, that happens, you know. Uh... Yeah, see, uh, what are the BTOs as well as the normal rundowns have all been factored in our 14,000 crores. This is a normal thing. And uh, to answer your question on specifically on BTOs, I'm happy to announce that BTOs are relatively less compared to BTNs, which is, uh, there is a reversal in trend that we have noticed in the first quarter. Hopefully, if this continues in the coming quarters also, I think we will be able to handle this BTOs, which was one of the problem areas of this company the last year. And any guidance on uh, uh, this portfolio purchase that we did in Q1 and Q4, will that be will that be continued in this financial year as well? Frankly, as an organization, we want to go organically, let us be very clear. But if an opportunity comes, as far as DA is concerned, definitely we will look into the option, provided it is profitable, it gives us uh, volumes. Okay. Thanks a lot, sir, and all the best. Uh, thanks, and thanks, Mr. Akar. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aniket Kulkarni from BMSPL Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so during the initial commentary, you spoke about some structural changes which the company is going through and you said the effects of which will be seen in the coming quarters. So can you just give some more detail on what are the sorts of changes which you are doing and how will it affect the business going forward? Thanks, Mr. Company. See, this company was not having any sort of verticalization in place in all these years. Okay, this sort of verticalization has, has uh, have, we have started doing. And in the last call also, we had told about a collection vertical that was implemented. In the current quarter, that is, we have also, also started a sales vertical separately. Going forward, we will also be adding a credit vertical. So, this collection vertical is more or less stabilized, even though the results are yet to come in. Sales vertical is in process. It is just one month over. Going forward, I think sales vertical also will be giving us more volumes. So this is what uh, normally we are talking. In addition to that, I think we have also done some structural changes as far as our software is concerned, which I mentioned in the opening remarks. So all these are uh, just a brief. In each and every department, something or other is happening. But basically, some sort of a verticalization has started happening in this company. And we are confident that this is going to give us results. Okay, okay. Thanks for the answer and uh, stuff. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Mr. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Abhijit Kibrewal from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. And, sir, I um, just wanted to understand if you could uh, first give a data point. Uh, if I look at your disbursements, have you uh, already shared the split of your disbursements between home loans and VAP? 
home loan and home equity we have given now hello so has has that already been provided yeah yeah i think it's already been provided i can give you once more yeah yeah i will tell you you have i think we have given the percentage i will give you the number see as far as home loan is concerned it is 9735 crores and home equity is 2990 crores this is the split of your loan book right yeah yeah loan book no sir i was asking actually about about disbursements so for the, for this quarter and and maybe the last uh, two quarters if you could give the split of your disbursements between home loans and lap and home equity to uh, home loans and home not uh, readily available i will see whether i can give you before the end of the call sure sir so the the, th- the other thing i was wanting to understand is uh, while very clearly we have started to demonstrate uh, some growth in uh, your your advances now which is probably around uh, 12650 crores now uh, what is a little worrisome here is uh, if i look at home loans right home loans has grown by just about 2% year over year while your lab book has grown by about 28% year over year so i understand i mean the things that we've been through But sir, historically speaking, also uh, lab sample self-employed segment has been a problem area for for repco. Even if I look at uh, the gross uh, NPA numbers that we share, uh, basis product segments, there also if you look at it uh, in home equity lab, right, we had a peak NPA of about 10 percent, almost about seven, 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 eight quarters back, which is now at seven percent. so so why is it that we continue to do well uh, in in lab there we are not seeing a lot of btia outs as a matter of fact our book has been growing 28% is very strong growth while housing loans which are more safer there we have just seen a 2 2% kind of a wide wide growth so just one clarification i would like to make it is not exactly lab book it what we call as home equity so it is not that entire non home loan or all lab this lab uh, this so called home equity consists of two or three segments one is of course a lab which will maybe a major thing the other thing is on a commercial even a commercial real estate uh, one second let us say a home loan with uh, three kitchens we call it as home equity see all these come under home equity portion and you may also be remembering recently rbi came up with a circular wherever some reimbursements happen In, even in case of a home loan it is not to be considered as a home loan so all these put together come under a non home loan portfolio so even though we would uh, technically speaking these may be home loans they are classified more from a uh, super basic point as a non home loan so that is why i am saying as far as the non home loan portfolio i do not want to take it entirely as lab book second to your question yes lab is giving me some margins and we are very very clear even in case of lab whatever be the portion even in case of lab all our uh, normal requirements like uh, civil score or uh, the quality of the client all these are taken into consideration before we sanction the loan the entire risk parameters are all uh, parameterized in our uh, uh, llms itself so all these are taken into consideration so let us not have a view that all lab books will be uh, riskier of course because by the nature NPA percentage of a home equity will be higher than a home loan. And second, in home loan, <clears throat> there is a steep competition compared to my home equity. So my growth is also happening this way. And this particular quarter, it is more because of the change in the nomenclature uh, due to supervisory thing. There is an increase in a non-home loan portfolio. And to come to your uh, thing, we have now got the disbursement uh, for the current quarter. It is 410 crores housing. and for 274 crores home equity uh, previous uh, let us say 480 crores in june 2020 it was 480 and 162 and the march 23 it is 555 280 so it is happening home uh, always the home housing portfolio is more than home equity portfolio and i again repeat it is not that all non housing loan portfolios are lab so so And so this thing that you explained, the the change in product mix, a sharp change in product mix that we are seeing this quarter, where the home equity portfolio has moved up from 20.7 to 23 percent. This is 
purely uh, a reclassification or the change in uh, guidelines and nomenclature is what you talked about. It should be. It should be mostly because of that reason. Because <clears throat> we have taken all that. Nearly, I do not have the exact number, but close to the circular, we have reclassified all our reimbursement loans as uh, home equity portfolio. Of course, there may be an increase in the home equity, home equity portfolio in the current quarter. I am not denying that, but it is mostly because of the reclassification. Got it. The last last question is, I mean, how should we now kind of look at uh, the asset quality? Obviously, under your leadership, I mean, the asset quality has continued to improve. Uh, during the opening remarks, you also talked about that guidance where uh, for the full year, you talked about bringing down the NPAs by about 100 crores. Almost a quarter of that you've already achieved. So how should we look at uh, asset quality going forward? You talked about initiating a lot of SAF AC. Um, so, so, so that that's all my question. I mean, how should we look at asset quality and and also credit costs for the full year? As far as asset quality, whatever hundred crores we have given was a really a conservative estimate. We want to be especially conservative as far as asset quality is concerned, mainly because of the restricted portfolio that is still there in our NPA as well as stage two number. It is because of that reason. But as I mentioned in the opening remarks, and as you have mentioned. We are going slightly aggressive as far as recovery actions are concerned in the our in, uh, NPA portfolios, the stage three portfolios. We are confident that all these uh, efforts will uh, bring the NPA numbers still down, and we may even better our uh, guidance as far as NPA numbers are concerned. We continue to monitor almost on a daily basis, on a monthly basis. Definitely, uh, we will be in a position, in my view, we will be in a position to monitor unless something drastically changes. Got it, sir. This is very, very useful. Thank you so much for patiently answering my questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anand Mundra from Soar Wealth. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Uh, sir, wanted to check with you. How do we plan to grow our business by increasing the ticket size or increasing branch productivity or opening new branches? Because when I was doing that, it looks like branch productivity is already very good. Uh, I have a slight different opinion, Mr. Mundra. There is still scope for improvement in productivity. That is where we are driving. Of course, uh, we will be opening more branches. These branches also will give us business, no doubt about it. But the verticalization that I was talking about, that is only for improving the productivity of our staff. Because some portion of our existing stuff, we are going to earmark exclusively for selling. Selling our, uh, to our customers, approaching new customers. So more and more customers, we branch out and get it rather than uh, walking customers. I think with all this, we want to improve the per staff productivity or per branch productivity. I think that could be the main source of our growth uh, for the current year, as well as for the coming year. Okay. Sir, I visited a few branches, so I realized that we, we don't work on feet on street model. Is that correct? Or it's because I visited branches in Western India, so I wanted to confirm that. I agree. We were, we were not at least to a certain extent. I can agree. We were not feet on street model, but that is what we are changing. Now, with almost all the branches having an exclusive sales staff, at least one okay. person will be in the street throughout. And we are monitoring his or her performance on a daily basis, how many <coughs> new logins this particular uh, segment is bringing us. This is in addition to the other verticals like a DSA or a walk-in model. So the exclusive person uh, who is earmarked for sale, he is supposed to bring in fresh business. That is the expectation, but that is still uh, a process which has just started one month back. So going forward, maybe if you visit the same branches two or three quarters hence, I think you will see a change. Yeah, yeah, definitely, sir. I saw a lot of changes and uh, staff were really motiv motivated. I was just talking about the branch productivity. So, second question which I had was, uh, what about the portfolio in stage 2 and stage 1, only the portion of 0 to 30 days? So, 0 to 30 and 30 to 60 and 60 to 90, what percentage of portfolio is there, sir? Okay, this is, uh, I agree with you, sir, because because of the software that is changes taking place, we are unable to zero in on the correct numbers as far as stage 2 and stage 1 are concerned. Definitely going forward, maybe in the next one or two quarters, we will be giving you the precise numbers. Because still there are some uh, number issues, 
definitely in the next two or three quarters we will be able to give you the exact numbers in stage two. Okay, so one more question: What is the actual credit loss which we have, which we have actually suffered in the last five six years? Whatever you can recollect. Oh, sorry, I am just one year old. Anyway, I will try to give you maybe in, not. No. In the last three four years, yeah. Whatever number you have, sir. Uh, I don't have exactly. Yeah. Anyway, I'll try. I'll try to give you before the end of the course. One course. Okay. Five years you are asking. Thank you, sir. Last year I can tell you. Last year and the current year. See this this particular quarter we did only around five crores, less than five crores credit cost. I think last year we did around twenty five crores, madam. I no, mean, I'm not talking about the provision, sir. I'm talking about the actual credit loss which you have suffered because you have auctioned the property at a lesser value than the loan outstanding. That will be very, very less, sir. And see, right from inception of this company, the actual rate off will be around 10 to 15 crores. Actual rate off. 10 to 15 crores. Actual rate off. Maybe, uh, maybe another, maybe 10 or 15 crores, maybe is there, which we have to write off. That may be there. Net to net. This is throughout the history of the company. Okay, nice to know that. So coming back to the first point, you are saying that uh, we will be adding feet on feet in every branch, at least one employee. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so sir. and that person will manage any DSA, outsource DSA, or he will source file himself. No, our our direction to that particular employee is other than DSA. That should be. This is we call it as a direct channel. That is ah, our, channel, channel, yeah. our employee channel. DSA channel yeah. should be different. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks a Thank you. The next question is from the line of Avril Jain from Singular Gov. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, sir. So, Mike, uh, I have two questions. One is if you can uh, quantify the BT ins and BT outs uh, for the quarter and what has changed on ground so that you are attracting BT ins. That has been uh, our uh, had been our constant ask from the previous management to focus on BTNs and also reduce BT outs. So where are you seeing these BTNs from and if you can quantify both these numbers? And consequently, is there a fundamental borrower profile change that you are observing given yields are improving, the market is still very competitive? So those are my two questions. Okay. As far as BTNs are concerned, we got a BTN of 78 crores in the last quarter. BTOs, it is relatively difficult to measure because we do not know what are the exact BTNs, but approximately we can say that it should be around 44 to 55, 50 crores. So I can say confidently that in first quarter our BTNs were more than BTOs. To that extent, I can be confident. As far as borrower profile is concerned, we have not seen much of a change, at least in the last one or two quarters, we have not seen much of a change. Our existing borrower, our existing clientele remains the same. But going forward, if you are slightly aggressive in the salaried segment or in the documented segments, maybe we may, our home loan portion, housing loan portion may slightly go up. These BTNs are mostly from other housing finance companies whose interest rates are slightly higher. So if you become slightly aggressive in uh, our interest rates, maybe we, can, we will be seeing an increase in the home loan portfolio compared to the home equity portfolio. And the BTNs are a mix of both uh, home equity and home lo housing loans. Yes, yes, yes. Because normally they come not only for taking over, but also for give, giving some add-ons. Normally they come with an additional uh, to the existing loan proposal, existing loan quantum. So that is also being given by us. Only for that reason they are coming. That is one in addition to the yeah. interest rate. Second, as we and, are also uh, seeing, uh, tracking the movement of our customers, Wherever we are seeing an indication that some of our customers may move out, we try to contact them and see whether BTOs can be prevented. So there is a central monitoring team which is checking civil hits and other hits on your existing borrowers. Are you putting something like that in, uh, in motion at a branch level or at the central level? At the head, head office level. Head office level we are monitoring through uh, our links with the central agencies who like civil who give us reports about the likelihood of our customer moving out. So we yeah, try to number of hits, correct. Right. Uh, we try to contact them so that we prevent such BT outs. And are BTNs, uh, the average yield on the BTNs higher than the overall portfolio, like for like product, or that is in line with your overall book? 
Preteens, if it is higher, they do not move in. No, naturally they will come to me only if there is some <coughs> concession or some uh, reduction to them. So it will be online. Of course, we do not sacrifice. Just because of BT in, we do not reduce our uh, normal interest rate. So they move in. If it is favorable, if it is competitive to them compared to their existing portfolio, they move here. And they uh, let me ask you this question. Yeah, sorry. Let me ask you this question differently, sir. So we have seen a, a tremendous growth in uh, affordable housing finance companies like Anaptus or Amas or Anadhar, HSFC. They have much higher yield. Their average yield is roaming around 13 and a half, 14 percent. And even for Anaptus, it's much higher. And they they are showing pristine asset quality. So is that a big hunting ground that could uh, that Repco could target their seasoned borrowers who can you can actually attract at 11, 11.5% sort of borrowing uh, uh, it. No, we don't target, uh, Mr. Aviral, we don't target any specific company or specific thing. People come based on our rates. Maybe word of mouth uh, publicity goes, they see what is our interest rates and all. Our people, when they move out, they find out what is our interest rate. So such a risk can come in in a natural fashion. It is not because of any aggressive posture to any particular company or sector. This uh, this sort of a BT is more mainly because of our interest rates which are the competitors. I agree, I completely agree with you. So with this verticalization of sales, there there could be a situation where you will have lot more focus and lot more effort by your team on ground, the Terex channel. You would want to bring in cases. It could be a fresh loan applicant or it could be an existing borrower to some other housing finance company. So we should be seeing some healthy traction here, right, given the verticalization that you talked about. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That is one uh, thing that may happen in future. Of course, this I would like to repeat, as far as the sales vertical is concerned, it is still in the nascent stage. Okay, we need to train them, we need to tell them how it has to happen and all that. Maybe one or two quarters down the line, this sales vertical will bring in enough business to us. Which will save on cost as well. Yeah, and curiously, so how how were leads being generated earlier? It was people walking into a branch, and there was no outreach as such. Just there, very, were outreach. Uh, uh, there were outreach, but it was more informal. Now we are we are standardizing the outreach. Uh, earlier, if you remember, recall some years back, we used to have some sort of credit camps. But these credit camps are no more happening. It is not uh, popular everywhere because of the competition that is there. So uh, slowly, it was more, especially in the South, our popularity, our brand value itself was bringing in business. But now that competition is becoming intense, now we need to go for outreach. So that's what uh, we have done this. Uh, and earlier, uh, let us say one year or two years back, not only our outreach, not only our uh, publicity or our brand, Yes, some sort of an informal uh, thing from our existing customers also brought in new business. But now we want to be more uh, nearer to the customer, more nearer to the prospective customer. I think this sales vertical is going to help us in that fashion. And so aspirationally, two years down the line, would you, do you, would you aspire to outgrow the 20% target that's just for this year in terms of disbursement growth, the organic disbursement growth, given so many... Building blocks have been put in place. They should. Who, who will say no? Yeah. Of course, I have to grow more than 20 percent. I will be too happy. Definitely. Okay. Sure. Uh, once I see okay. the momentum, I think we will be resetting our own uh, uh, hurdle. Okay. That's good to know, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks, sir. Thank you. The next question is on the line of of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximal Capital Private Limited. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Uh, so this change in the mix in favor of uh, home equity has been very sharp uh, from 20.7 to 23.1 percent. Saying that uh, part of it might be due to some changes in the classification norms which would have happened during this quarter. So what is that, sir? That is an important input number that you would want to know. Well, sir, they see, we do not actually target for non-home loans. <laughs> the bottom is going to be big. It is not that uh, the growth is happening only in the non-home loan segment. 
One of, as you yourself mentioned, it is because of the change, so some reclassification has happened. But some of the home loans also, we ourselves have classified, as I, as I was uh, telling, it could be a pure housing loan, but when we notice that there's more than two kitchens, or it may be a place where he will be building a house, in addition he will also be constructing a small shop in front of his house. Such a thing we classify under home equity. These are all the reasons why uh, this home equity portion has gone up. There is nothing, uh, and I'll, I want to assure that we are a basically a home loan uh, company, and you will also be knowing that we can go even up to 40% of non-home loan portfolio. We are only around 23%, so we are very much within the supervisory now, and we are not actually aggressive. I do not want to have any such notion that we are slightly aggressive in non-home loan portfolio. No. It is happening, whatever is coming to our thing, we take. And this uh, classification as well as, especially in the new software, we are very, very clear. Unless it is pure home loan, we cannot classify under uh, any other category. So all these are uh, coming into picture. Only because of this uh, sort of a reclassification, that is an increase in the home equity portfolio. Otherwise, <coughs> we are pure housing loan company, and we will continue to be a, a major housing loan company. Um, no, that's good, sir, but it would still be, um, you know, preferred to get that number. So maybe after the call, uh, you know, it can be shared offline. Uh, on so that is one. Uh, second is, sir, uh, if I look at your employee cost on a YOY basis and QOQ basis, it is up 17 and 0 percent. And uh, the numbers are up only 2%. So, does it mean that on an average 15% inflation in salary has happened uh, from last year to this year? Okay. See, I told in the initial sales, so we have we did a revision in salary with effect from January 2023. In fact, we paid out to the employees during this first quarter. That is, we paid in June along with the arrears and we have paid. So this is one of the major reasons why there has been an increase in the thing. And you should also factor that there has been an increase in the cost of living over a period. So that has also been factored. All these, we are hopeful. One, the productivity of staff should increase based on this because we are also uh, going to ask our staff members. And the second one is there was an addition of around 18% last year. We are quite confident that with the revision in salary, this attrition number will definitely come down. And we will have more people who are well-trained in our company who will be there in the company. And this will give us better productivity. That too, when we are going for vertical extent of, it will help us because the trained staff will be in the street. That will help us in increasing the numbers. And despite all that, we are also keeping an eye on the cost to income ratio. It is somewhat under control. And going forward also, this, this will be the same thing. And we do not expect any major increase in the coming quarters because already these things have been factored. Uh, we have in, uh, the establishment cost is increasing by around one crore per month, which has already been factored by us. And we are confident that our increasing income will take into account this establishment cost increase. Hmm. And what is your, I mean, your names have also spiked up in the last few quarters. Uh, the name per, the name percentage has also gone up uh, uh, relative to the earlier levels. Okay, what's the sort of the levels that we want to maintain? I mean, if we are going to be very aggressive on the non-home loan segment, then maybe, you know, names can be maintained. But then you might see more uh, gross NPAs uh, stress building up later on. So how are you thinking about the names uh, as such? Okay. See, I would like to repeat, we do not want to be aggressive in any one segment, <laughs> leave alone non-housing loan segment. We want to be as like what we were as far as book growth is concerned. Both home loans and home equity should grow in that. This is our expectation. We want to do the same thing. Maybe in the first quarter, you would have seen some increase in this. One thing we want to be very clear, whatever is the cost increases, we want to pass it on. We do not want to bear the cost increase. That is one thing that uh, we are cautious. Otherwise, I think going forward, it will be the same. We have given a guidance of around 4.7% or 4.8% of NIM. Even though in the first quarter, the NIM is slightly more than our guidance, I think it will stipulate around 4.7%, 4.8% in the year end. 
Once we increase our home loan portfolio, especially to the salary segment, which is slightly competitive, where I have to give some concessions to get the customer. Understood. Um, and finally, on the credit cost, I think this has gone down a lot, and maybe because of the reduction in the gross NPA numbers. So maybe in case you are targeting another hundred crore decrease this year, then they will continue to be subdued. Uh, but uh, what is the sort of realistic uh, steady state number in terms of the credit cost that you are looking at? We have given a 25 crores, I think, right? So we have given a 25 crores uh, uh, thing for the current year. We would like to maintain that. Uh, we do not want to increase. I think so this year is fine, sir, because this will still is coming down from a higher base, but then. You know, maybe going down two, three years down the line. How are you looking at the credit costs given the kind of profile that you are lending at? Okay, see, we are monitoring. Let us be very clear, sir. We are monitoring whatever is the loans we are giving. So the early mortality or the early overdues and all are getting monitored. So comparatively, we are confident that we will be able to maintain the same level of GMP and NPF numbers, or it will be going. The trajectory will be uh, downward uh, shifting going forward, and we are confident that going forward too, this credit cost numbers will be maintained, or even it can even be reduced. Understood, sir. Thank you, and all the best, sir. Thanks, Adish. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raja Gopal Ramanathan from Sadakush. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. A yeah. uh, few questions. Uh, a couple of them are uh, data specific. Uh, one is, uh, do you have a stock of uh, or a quantum of uh, loans that have been written off completely, uh, but you hope to expect to recover over the next? Say 24 months or so. That is the first one. Uh, the second one uh, relates to direct assignments, wherein uh, you've indicated uh, numbers for Q1 FY23 and Q4 FY23. So I presume uh, some DAs which were may which were probably onboarded in Q1 FY23 and the balance which was outstanding in Q4 FY23. But you've not stated what is that quantum in Q1 FY24. So I believe uh, uh, that either suggests that direct assignments are completely uh, repaid or uh, you've got to indicate what that is so that you can make an appropriate comparison. Apart from that, uh, a couple of other questions relate to any specific reasons why you're being so conservative with respect to growth. Uh, because as one of the other uh, analysts pointed out, uh, you have a lot of other housing finance companies which are comfortably uh, able to achieve 20% uh, plus uh, growth in uh, their entire loan book. And uh, we are sort of, uh, 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 we are wanting to sort of constrain ourselves at uh, levels of around 12 to 15%. So is there any specific management thought behind that? And uh, lastly, if you, if you do prefer to be so conservative, then what is the rationale in having a capital adequacy of 36% uh, then? Because uh, you will never be in a position to sweat your capital uh, if, if you're going to be operating at such growth rates. So you shouldn't you therefore be distributing more dividends? No. Because uh, clearly if you look at payouts, your payouts are very, very uh, uh, limited. And uh, therefore it actually calls for you to increase your payouts to improve capital productivity. So done, sir? Yeah, done. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Rajagopal. See, as far as right off is concerned, I think we have answered earlier. <clears throat> See, throughout the history of the company, we would have written off maybe 10 to 15 crores, not much, as far as right, written off is concerned. Today, maybe in the technical right of book, we will be having around 14 to 15 crores of uh, assets which we have already sold, but still something is outstanding. But these have been technically written off. We are also tra tra seeing whether some strategy can be worked out to recover even this amount. Okay, this is first step. As far as direct assignment is concerned, I think we want to be very clear. See, we had put 70 crores or 66 crores of direct assignment within the disbursement of Q1 of last year as well as Q4 of last year. In Q1 of 2023-24, we did not do any direct assignment. So which means in the disbursement portfolio, there is no DA. 
As far as book is concerned, yes, whatever we have already sourced, that will still remain. To your uh, question, specific question, we can say that I think it is around 112 crores. It is still lying, right? No? It is around 112 crores. It is still lying in our book. Out of these 12,655 crores, there is around 112 crores, which is a DA book that is still prevailing. But to, uh, during the first quarter, we did not do any DA transaction. That's what I want to be very clear. AEM book, uh, Mr. Rajagopal, I think maybe you are a new investor. This company was not doing all the well. It was somewhat negative. If you remember, two or three years continuously, we were somewhat negative or we were not growing. So from 2023-24, we wanted to be conservative mainly because we wanted to change the curve. So from a negative person, we wanted to do something different. And that is why we have given a, a thing of 12 percent. Maybe going forward when we see the momentum, definitely in the next year, you will see that our growth rate also will be <coughs> on par with the industry. But one thing you should also understand, we are now a 23-year-old company. Now, naturally, there will be a repayment. Normal repayments itself will be there compared to some of our other uh, people who are relatively new. So that is also to be factored in as far as AEM growth is concerned. That is the only thing. As far as capital, yes, we want to use as much as possible. You will be seeing the change in the coming year. Let us be very clear, this company is making a slow turnaround. I think we need to be a little patient. This is as an MP, I am requesting you people, you investors, please be a little patient. You will be seeing the results in definitely in the coming year. Uh, sir, I have actually looked at the last 10 years in terms of uh, repayments as a percentage of your opening loan book. Okay. And uh, it, it has tended to average anywhere between 15% to 20% of the opening loan book. So if, uh, if I were to look at this chart, it tells me that uh, irrespective of whatever era or whatever uh, management has been or whatever uh, uh, sort of cycles the company has undergone, this number has not changed much. Whereas what, is, what seems to have happened is the disbursement growth which happened between, say, 2013 and 2016, which, were, uh, which was significantly higher, anywhere between, say, uh, 25% plus, that seems to have completely collapsed. And now you seem to be uh, trying to sort of bend this curve. So what, what I'm essentially saying is uh, the home loan business is uh, a capital efficient business. And uh, if you're actually going to be uh, very, very conservative with respect to the growth, you will only be uh, uh, sort of uh, making yourself more uh, overcapitalized in the process. Uh, and why I say this is, if you look at your valuations, and I'm not necessarily saying uh, you should be compared with any other housing finance company, but even for you to command uh, a book value multiple, you have to clearly, uh, investors have to be able to see that capital productivity improves or uh, your growth uh, needs to sort of uh, meaningfully uh, move up. Uh, my point is, look, I'm not dissatisfied with what you're doing. But I'm saying that this is one area where you need to start working on because there is no point in hoarding capital when uh, you're not uh, expecting to utilize it uh, in, in a foreseeable period. That's my limited observation. Okay, thanks. Thanks for your observation, sir. <clears throat> See, you will be seeing the working. Okay. As far as valuation is concerned, you will agree that valuation is not in my hands. It is in your hands. No, sir. That, that is actually completely in your hands. Because if you decide to pay out dividends, there is no reason why equity holders are going to complain. Please try to understand, tomorrow when you need capital for growth, equity shareholders will give you capital for growth if you are able to make your capital productive. It is not in our hands. It's completely in the company's hands. See, I do not want to get into any war of words with you. I fully appreciate. I am very, very happy that you have analyzed very well. Definitely, you will be seeing an increase in the dividend payout. But dividend payout alone is not one of the valuation criteria. I think you will agree for that. Not only that, Mr. Rajkwal, you will be seeing uh, going forward, there will be an increase in number. There will be more utilization of capital that will be seen. Once the growth picks up, we will also see increasing the uh, capital growth. Dividend is one part of it. Uh, effective utilization of capital is second. You will also be seeing. Uh, definitely when I borrow more, when I spend more, all this, when the book increases, uh, definitely this capital adequacy also will come into picture. I wish you all the best, sir, but uh, please don't misunderstand what I have uh, tried to put forth uh, here, because when you have excess uh, capital within the system, it also creates a false uh, 
sense of uh, security saying that how does it matter i have all the capital i can do whatever i want so it is just to ensure that the company does not become uh, uh, does not take capital lightly and ensures that it uh, works towards making it more productive that's my limited point thank you very much all the best thank you very much sir i take your advice thank you a reminder to all participants to ask a question you may press star and 1 The next question is from the line of Akash Jain from Money Curves Analytics. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, I think company obviously has come a long way in the last one year under your leadership, and I think uh, numbers are there to see. I have uh, a couple of questions, sir. One is, uh, uh, I think last quarter uh, there was this discussion around stage two, where you said that clearly the focus uh, uh, for the last one year has been on GNP and. I think successfully the GNPA has been controlled. But I think you also mentioned that your focus will now move to stage two because stage two looks a high number, and we have to get the collection process in place uh, to bring stage two under control. So I just wanted to uh, understand from you uh, where are we in terms of our strategy for controlling stage two. Uh, I, I I understand you were not able to give uh, break up between stage one and stage two this time. But uh, but from a strategic point of view, we are be from a focus perspective on stage two. Okay, thanks, Mr. Akash. As you have said, yes, uh, we are now focusing more on stage two. Uh, in fact, uh, more than even stage three, we are focusing more on stage two. Uh, and the collection vertical is more or less getting stabilized. We as of now we have 85 people exclusively on collection. Okay, covering 120 branches cover, uh, being covered under stage two. on on a daily basis this we are monitoring of course we are unable to give you specific numbers because of the change in the software going forward we will be able to give you even specific numbers on stage 2 we are slightly aggressive on stage 2 we have been conveying to the branches also on uh, on early mortality bringing down the numbers following up on uh, check return and so on and i'm confident that in the next two, uh, two or three quarters the stage 2 numbers will be Less than 10 percent, which is our uh, which is our cadence. We are confident that we should be in a position to bring down this stage two to less than 10 percent. Sir, the other question is on 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 slippages. Uh, so clearly, the number on provision is very low. So I'm assuming there is not too much of slippage into stage three. But can you just give us uh, uh, some number in terms of what was the slippage for this quarter and what was the recovery? Yeah, the slippage actually was 56 crores. But we could recover around 80 crores uh, this quarter. So net is there is a reduction of 24 crores. Going forward, also we expect since we are monitoring almost on a daily basis. Going forward, too, we expect the numbers uh, to come down. To that extent, there will be a release in our uh, provision, uh, which will help us in containing the provision uh, requirements. And, and is it fair to assume that most of the uh, slippage has come from the restructured book? Or is it stage two non-restructured book slippage as well? Uh, uh, yeah, you are perfectly right, sir. Most of the slippages are from, uh, out of the 56 crores, nearly 50 percent is from restructured book. This may continue also because there is still around 150 to 200 crores in stage two as far as this restructured book is concerned. But they are slipping in a slow fashion. But I am also glad to inform that they are also recovering from the restructured book even in stage three. So, though some 25 to 30 crores would have slipped in the first quarter, we have also recovered a similar quantum from the restructured book even in stage three. So, to that extent, uh, we are confident that this will remain. Then, last one, last question. See, like you said, there is a very strong uh, legal process that we have started on surface. So, uh, my assumption is that what will be the? Can you give us a sense of what is the timeline? Typically, for example, if you initiate a surface process, then uh, some people may pay up, or you may have to take possession and sell the property and recover. So, uh, given the fact that we have already provided 50% of our coverages on GNPA, uh, and given the way real estate prices have gone, my sense is that when recovery happens, we will probably uh, recover significantly more than what we have provided. So. There will be probably right back if I'm not mistaken. So just give us a sense whether there will be right back if my understanding is right, and just a broad timeline perspective on when does uh, recoveries uh, start flowing in from the timeline from the time we start the surface process. See, technically, within six months the entire surface process should be over. This is a normal uh, now. 
but you will understand that it is more a threat which is given to the customer which helps us in recovery. So once a surplus notice is issued or a position notice is issued or even an option notice is issued, we do not expect that uh, it will succeed, then only we will recover. It is more from a threat that the customer comes to us, he talks, he comes with some OTA solutions and all that. I think more than the actual surplus, it is the uh, threat or the, uh, the threat that we are giving to the customer which brings us the recovery. That is how uh, it will speed up. It is not from pure surplus action. Pure surplus action, okay. Maybe some 20 to 30 euros every quarter we may get. But it is more from the threat of uh, surplus you notice that people come to us, come for discussion, and we get recovery. And do you expect uh, uh, right backs to come? Because we have obviously provided 50% and definitely uh, uh, all these resolutions will end up being significantly higher recoveries than what we have provided for, right? That's my understanding is the fix, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely some right backs will come. But that right backs we have not started in the current year. Again, being conservative. But eventually, given the fact that so much of provisions have happened in the last few years and continuing to happen because of the restructured book, etc. Over the next maybe one year or two years, we will see significant recovery and right back. That is at least uh, possible or my assumption is right uh, in that case. Because resolutions are going to happen in the next 12 months, 18 months, right? It is possible, Mr. Akash, but I do not want to give you any specific numbers. It is possible. <clears throat> because as you say, since we are providing more, that gives us a uh, definite cushion for the future. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. A so one small thing before I go to the next question. Yes. See, as far as this home equity portion is concerned, it's a mixture as I was telling. The lab book is only 24%. Okay, that is, uh, there is a CRE uh, re uh, residential. Uh, uh, that is around 11%. There is some commercial construction that is also happening that is around 2%. So the entire uh, book is not uh, lab. Lab is only around 34 percent. Just for clarification, I think one of the analysts uh, asked for it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Rishikesh Oza from Rover Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, what? Uh, how many branches are we looking to add in FI24 and FI25? FI25 and FI25? FI25, we do not have the numbers. FI24, I can tell you. FI24, we will be opening. <coughs> Already, we have opened four centers. I will not say branches. I will open outlets. Four outlets we have already done. Three more we will be doing this quarter. Another eight, we have already got the approval from board. And maybe some more also we may do, uh, uh, another uh, five to six we may do. So at the end of the year, definitely we will be 200 plus. Okay. Okay. And uh, also I missed the number of credit cost. What credit cost are we guiding for FI24? 24, 25 crores, sir. And 25 crores? 25 crores. And same 25 crores that we are saying for FI25 also more or less, right? 25 is uh, slightly, slightly far away. 25, we are not so far given any guidance. Okay, but we expect the credit cost to be benign in FI25 too? Should be, Mr. Rishikesh. I do not want to give a guess, but should be, or even less. Okay. So okay. as per our uh, trajectory, I think it should be even less. Okay. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Well, I, thank, I think we have covered all the areas. I thank all the people who were in the conference call. I thank everybody. I thank uh, specifically Securities for arranging all this conference call. Thank you all. Thank you. On behalf of ES Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.